Our next uh, speaker is our, is our first politician of the evening. Um, and uh, um, I'll point out that we will have people speaking from all three of the leading uh, parties. Um, the politicians are essential to us. When um, Leveson reports, um, his report goes to Parliament. It goes, first of all, to the government. It might even see, conceivably be placed in the hands of Jeremy Hunt and in his custody. Can you imagine that? Uh, the safekeeping of Jeremy Hunt. Um, uh, the politicians, as I say, are important to us because um, that far down the line, what they do and what they say will really matter to what, what comes out of all this. Um, so our first politician of the evening um, is um, uh, the deputy leader of the Labour Party, um, is uh, the uh, Labour spokesperson on uh, media affairs, uh, Harriet Palmer. about exposing whole-scale disregard to the rules of fairness and abiding by the law. And I'm afraid that Jeremy Hunt has shown he is not being prepared to obey the rules or obey the law. So as far as I'm concerned, he shouldn't be in his job. So I hope it will be a different uh, Secretary of State that receives the Leveson report. But I do hope that actually we will be able to find some cross-party working to actually solve these problems that have been around uh, for years. And I can see many of you who've been around for years on this issue, campaigning uh, on these issues, because we know these are not new problems. They're nothing new about the police uh, selling and the media buying uh, information which is both protected by the criminal justice system in terms of it being a criminal offence to buy and sell uh, information from the police, but also a disciplinary offence. But obviously it's been going on for years, there's nothing new about that. There's nothing new about having uh, no proper redress for individuals where the press complaints code is breached. Uh, there's nothing new about uh, the press being too powerful um, and media monopolies being uh, too, too powerful. So these are long-standing problems. But what is new is that we have, at this moment, a historic opportunity to actually solve these problems and not be here in another one, two, three decades still discussing the same problems. So I think that this is a very, very... Uh, historic and important moment and I really want to thank Pactor and the Coordinating Committee for Media Reform. You know, we have to get to the end of this um, and we can do, do so. I think that what we have to understand is what is the problem. I think the problem is twofold. A sense of invincibility in the Murdoch Empire. They owned too many newspapers, 37% of the readership it was only too many newspapers, they were too powerful, they felt invincible and above the law or any sort of rules. And behind them and their behaviour, because of their invincibility, then the rest of the media uh, no doubt followed suit. That's the first thing, invincibility. And secondly, impunity. They felt if they broke the rules, um, and breached the code that actually there was not a proper press complaint system that could do anything about it. And therefore, if you get that combination of invincibility and impunity, they feel what they, they can do what they like. Now, we need to have um, solutions to those problems. But I think that it's wrong to characterise those of us who want redress for individuals and want a diverse rather than monopolistic press it's wrong to characterise us as being against a free press. And I personally feel, as many of you do here, very strongly about that. I think that just as the press are prepared to, if they get too powerful, abuse that power, so too can government. And I, you know, although it was a long time ago, it remains very strongly with me to this day what it felt like when the Tory government, in the shape of the Tory Attorney General and the Tory Home Secretary, decided to prosecute me for contempt because of an article that I've worked with on The Guardian 
um, which actually exposed wrongdoing in the prison system. So the idea that we want the press to be muzzled is absolutely um, wrong, because actually the government does need to be held to account, and we do need a, a free press. But we do have to make change to address the invincibility and impun impunity. Firstly, redress for individuals. Um, I think we've got to have a system that applies to all newspapers. Opting in is hopeless. You don't, the magistrate doesn't have to say to the defendant, would you like to opt into the criminal justice system? It doesn't have to say to an employer who sat somebody, will you please opt into the employment tribunal? You need something which can actually apply to newspapers. So whoever um, has broken the code, that individual can actually have redress. So it's got to apply to everybody, not just those who choose to uh, have it. Secondly, it's got to be enforceable. It can't just make rulings. It's got to be able to uh, enforce them. Thirdly, it has got to be independent. Um, independent of government and independent of the press. I mean, Lord Hunt, David Hunt, says he is independent. I mean, he is appointed by the newspapers and he's a former Tory cabinet minister who sits on the Tory benches in the House of Lords. I mean, I don't know what his definition of independent is, but that is not mine. And it's got to be easy to use for everybody. So applying to everybody, enforceable, independent, and easy to use, that's what we should have from a redress system. And as far as the invincibility, tackling the invincibility is concerned, we have to address media monopoly, not just cross-media ownership, but within newspapers. Because um, that was the problem uh, that, 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 that's been with Murdoch. We need to have a way of measuring um, that that's agreed by everybody. We need to have a ceiling on ownership. 37% is way too much. We need to have a ceiling. Uh, we need to have proper mechanisms of requiring uh, divesting of newspapers um, and uh, we need to have strong support for Ofcom uh, or the, the, the regulator who's going to be dealing with this. I want to just quickly say, in conclusion, I think Leveson's inquiry is doing a great job uh, and they really shone a light on it and allowed a debate which hasn't been able to really properly happen, happen before and I really pay tribute to all of Leveson and his team who were uh, who are involved. I think it's really important that we've been able to have a more free debate and hopefully it can lead to judicious reform. But I think at the end of the day, what I hope we have is no victors and no vanquished here. What we need is a proper, fair system which gives redress and tackles monopoly. So I think that although many of us feel very uh, bitter in a whole load of way of reasons, for all sorts of reasons, uh, we've got to somehow have the equivalent of a kind of knife amnesty and put down our weapons and actually try and work out how we have a sensible solution. And I do want to also just pay a final personal tribute to those who've actually challenged the power um, of the press and the irresponsibility and the abuse, because I think it takes real, personal, um, heroic bravery. bravery. I think that the people who've come to Leveson and have actually relived in front of the media the experiences which have been so painful to them, I think I, you know, we really owe it to them. And you know, people like the Dala family being prepared to come forward and say that, I think that you know, that has been enormously important. And similarly, uh, Charlotte Church coming and talking about how they were prepared to pay tens of thousands of pounds to her young, unemployed, teenage lover in order to give details. That must have taken an awful lot to actually come forward and say that, so I think we really owe it. And I also think that we owe it to the kamikaze preparedness to risk all um, Tom Watson for actually throwing his person in front of the rails of the train. And still, still so far, but we have to check on daily basis so far still living to tell the tale and I also want to pay tribute to um, Ed Miliband because it is very easy to not actually stand up and say enough is enough this can't go on and actually I don't think we would have had that Leveson inquiry had we not had Ed Miliband saying as a party leader we've got to have an inquiry this can't go on but at the end of the day we've got to 
for all those people who've suffered and all those people who've taken risks, we have to actually finish the job, address that invincibility, address that impunity, and have a free press that is one which is fair. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Well, um, well, the thing about Vince Cable is that what he did is he said, um, he said privately um, to somebody that he wasn't going to act in a quasi-judicial way, and that is not the way to do it. So, um, no, I wouldn't give three cheers for this. <laughs>